I'd like to reconvene the work session and uh, the public work session and the budget work session for March 9th, 2022. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, apologies for running a little late. Welcome, everybody. Um, we'll go right to Mr. Bartels for a superintendent report. Thank you, Mr. O'Shea. Uh, our COVID numbers continue to stay in the single digits after the break uh, and after we've gone to mask optional last week. Based on the new guidance from the New York State Department of Health, the only requirement for masking at this point is upon return from a COVID positive quarantine on days six to 10. Um, also, uh, students who are exhibiting symptoms who do not get cleared with a COVID test uh, would need to also wear a mask on days six through 10 uh, of their absence. Uh, students and staff are still strongly encouraged to wear masks if they have been a close contact to a COVID positive individual, but that is not required. Students and staff exhibiting COVID, COVID symptoms should still stay home and will be sent home if found to be exhibiting these symptoms while at school. The rapid test kits uh, can be used to verify if an individual is COVID negative for return to school when the symptoms have resolved. Uh, those test kits can be the ones that the district hands out. Um, we do still have an abundance of them at each of the school buildings. You can pick them up at the main entrances. Uh, also, the state guidance also clarified that masks are not required on the school bus. Our students are getting accustomed to not wearing masks in school each day, and everything seems to be going very well. We're not seeing any real spikes in any of our schools, and we are planning to get all of our activities back to normal. We had a full red and blue event last weekend, which went great and was enjoyed by all. We also had the all district band concert last night with no restrictions on attendance and we had no issues. Tomorrow evening is the all district chorus concert, which will also have unrestricted attendance. We had held off on other changes with lunch protocols after taking the masks off last week to make sure that there were no spikes in the COVID cases. So at this time, we are planning to return to regular lunch at the high school beginning on Friday, as the majority of students there are vaccinated and many still prefer to eat outside with the open campus. At the middle school, beginning next week, we will not be using the classrooms for lunch anymore and we'll only be eating in the cafeteria and the auditorium just to maintain some spacing. We have received state approval for the tent at the middle school and that will be going up next week also to provide not to provide another option for lunch. Also beginning next week, the elementary schools will begin having all students eat lunch at the same time within the classrooms instead of breaking up the class into two sections. So we're all cognizant of the need to get completely back to normal and we will continue to review and evaluate and make changes while ensuring for the safety of all of our students. Uh, also each year, we try to have a meeting with our legislators. That meeting is gonna be this Friday morning. Uh, that meeting will be discussing timely item, items of interest on the local, state, and national levels. Some of the things we talk about are safety concerns around our schools, uh, ta school taxes, uh, funding, state aid sources, and Title I and other programs that would benefit the district. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Bartel. Any questions from the board? I do have a quick question about lunch um, at the elementary levels. Uh, the, the different buildings, are they considering also as the weather, weather gets warmer, some outdoor options for students to eat outside too, um, absent being able to purchase a tent, I understand, for every building, but um, is that a conversation the principals are having? Uh, I had not had that with them, I, I will. Uh, I know the high school does, many of them eat outside anyway, even in the cold weather. Um, but uh, we will have that discussion with each of the principals to see if they can maintain that as an option as well. Thank you. And at the grammar school level, Mr. Bartels, is there an, um, a thought that we would be going, moving towards going back to normal with them for lunch, et cetera? Uh, yes, we wanted to get everybody back uh, with the in eating in the classrooms at the same time. Uh, as many of you know, that is back to normal for Wilson School. Uh, the other elementaries would be going back to uh, full, full uh, cafeteria eating uh, in the gymnasiums. 
um, after some other short period of time. We don't. We just didn't want to do qu too quickly. We're trying to get everybody kind of acclimated. Uh, we still have kindergartens and first graders who have not had a full lunch, kind of together in a cafeteria since uh, the pandemic began. So you know they haven't even been in a school with that full lunch program. So I want to try to do that slowly, but uh, we are trying to work very quickly to kind of get that everything back to normal. We just kind of do it in little steps. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bartels. Everybody good? Okay, we're gonna go into our start our public work session of the meeting. Um, just a brief update on the superintendent's search. Uh, we will meet, I believe it's next Monday with the, with the firm that we hired to, uh, to present candidates to us. Um, they will present their, their they'll, they will present to, all, to us their recommendations, their top recommendations, and also everybody who applied. And then later on this month, we will start our interview process with these candidates. That's about all we can add. We don't know how many applied yet or who applied or, so we'll, uh, we're, we're working on that and we'll, you know, we'll keep the, the district up to date. Okay, the second item is district fundraising. Well, we are in the process of looking at the, um, the fundraising policies of the district. Uh, the, the attorneys advised us to wait till a regular board meeting to present that, so it would be, um, would be out in public with public comment available. So we'll continue that conversation at our next meeting on the 24th. It'll be a regular uh, board of ed meeting and um, we will be speaking about those uh, policies, the fundraising policies, I'm echoing, and um, the public can then come up and have comment and talk about them. Um, we, will, um, we will at the next meeting attempt to go back to the way we used to have uh, when parents came or parents or visitors came to the mic and, and hopefully be able to answer their questions when they come to the mic. So as long as we can you know, we, as long as we can handle the questions and everything is civil, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to go back to a way we used to do things, to try and answer the question. If we can't answer the question, then we'll, you know, uh, contact that person to the next day or whenever we can with the information for that. Okay. Um, we will now go into the budget work session of the night. Um, we will have a presentation and then the mic will be open to members of the public to come speak up on any matter of, uh, that concerns the budget. Mr. Bartels. Thank you, Ms. O'Shea. I uh, just wanted to thank Ms. Lalo for putting together this presentation. Uh, I'm gonna go through this one for the most part and I'll have some help and some of uh, our staff jump in. I uh, also want to thank Mr. Scalisi, who's also here. Uh, a good part of this presentation involves uh, capital projects and uh, those pieces that we're adding to the budget. Uh, so I wanted to have him here in case there were any questions that came up about that. Next. Sorry. So tonight we're going to talk about, uh, go over the timeline again. We always like to do that, go over the timeline of the, the budget. I want to talk about uh, the staffing and, and program changes that are that are in the budget. I want to review our elementary class sizes again, where we are. Uh, I've talked about the capital projects that we have planned or possibly planned for this budget, and then go through just a quick budget summary again. So on the timeline, um, we're actually on the March 9th with our budget discussion with programs and staffing. Um, March 1st, we had to file our tax cap filing with the state. Uh, that was a 2.1% tax cap based on our formula, and we will be under the tax cap uh, with this budget for this year. So we are not looking to exceed the cap. Um, March 24th will be our next budget discussion. Uh, I plan on having our other administrators uh, at that uh, meeting so we can go into more detailed discussions uh, of some of the programs, some of the staffing that we're, we're talking about this evening. Um, and I think it'd be a little better to have everybody here for that. Uh, our preliminary budget hearing on April 12th is the last day that we have that we can make a change to the budget uh, before it's finalized. Uh, April 18th is the last day for petitions to be filed for the board or who's gonna be running for the board. On May 4th, we have our formal budget hearing, which is something that's required by the state, uh, although we're not allowed to make any changes to the budget 
at that time. Uh, and then it culminates on May 17th with the annual election and budget vote. So for our staffing and program initiatives, I wanted to start by kind of going over some of the things that we've implemented for this year. So uh, even though we've had COVID and we've been doing, you know, a number of things with that and it's taken up a lot of our time, we have implemented some things for this year. Uh, so during this current year, some of the things that we've done have been replaced all of the student iPads with Chromebooks as a technology tool. Uh, we still have kindergarten, first and second grade to go. Uh, kindergartners, I believe, are going to be done hopefully at orientation. Third and fourth is happening this year. <laughs> Thank you. And then, uh, and then the rest would be in the fall. And then, right. Okay, first and second uh, would be in the fall. We'll finish that. Uh, we have uh, started a few years ago to upgrade smart boards to interactive TVs. Uh, they're better use of technology, and we don't have to go through software upgrades for those. So uh, that's something that we've continued to do this year, and we'll be doing that, uh, that project each year. Uh, we added kindergarten specialists this year. So we have now have art, music, and phys ed in kindergarten as we do in our other grade levels. Uh, we added some staff for math and reading support at the elementary schools. We added American Sign Language as a course at the high school. Uh, we added an elementary guidance counselor this year. We also added a high school social worker this year. We actually added two social workers at the high school this year, uh, one of them with COVID money. You'll see that on my next slide um, as we're looking to add that social worker in the budget, um, but we want to move them to the middle school. So right now we have five at the high school, two social workers at the middle school. We want to go back and bring the one from the high school down to the middle school. So we'd have four at the high school, three at the middle school, uh, which would work out nicely. That's kind of one per grade level. So it kind of evens it out a little bit. So as we've discussed also, we have integrated co-teaching, grades K to five. Uh, we're expecting that to add up to about 12 teachers, special education teachers to our staff. Um, that how many we actually need will depend on how many sections we're gonna actually have of that, but we believe it'll be at, at the most 12. Uh, math and reading support, uh, we're looking to add three full-time positions. Uh, one would be an elementary math support position. One would be uh, a middle school math support position to cover grades six to eight. And one would be an elementary reading position. The elementary reading position is really uh, more of a temporary position that we'd be using, uh, again, to help address COVID and learning loss and be utilizing COVID funds for that piece of it. So that, that piece would end up disappearing after a year or so. Uh, we are looking to uh, make some possible changes for algebra support um, in the middle school. I, I know there have been some concerns about that. We're reviewing different options. Uh, we'll be prepared to make a recommendation for that at, uh, at the March 24th board meeting. Uh, I mentioned the additional social worker for the middle school. Uh, and we're also going to be adding a new foreign language course at the high school. Um, we're planning on adding Italian. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing this is because American Sign Language can only be used as an elective at the high school level. So by adding um, this foreign language, by adding Italian, uh, we're actually able to give uh, foreign language credit. So I think that will help uh, increase some of the options for kids at the high school. Also at the high school, we're looking to add um, up to a 1.0 additional support for business and coding electives. We've seen an increase in student interest in DECA and computer technologies. Uh, so we wanted to provide some extra support there and uh, create some additional options for students. Uh, we're going to continue our after school support. Uh, we implemented that program this year with some of the COVID funding we have. and we're going to continue with that for next year. Um, and some athletic teams. So we're recommending uh, adding both a boys varsity volleyball team for next year, as well as a girls varsity golf team for next year. 
um, assistant coaches. Uh, one of the uh, questions and concerns that has come up um, during the fall in some of our budget meetings uh, involved assistant coaches. Uh, had a number of discussions with uh, our athletic director uh, regarding this, and at this point, we would like to look at adding one additional assistant coach for all teams that do not currently have an assistant coach. That would be at the middle school, the JV, and the varsity level. So basically the feeling is if we need to add one for the one team, if it's at the varsity level, we would need to add it at the JV level and at the middle school level as well. Um, so that that is something that's in there. Uh, we have not, just for the board's information, in the 20 years I've been here, I don't believe we've ever added any assistant coaches. Um, this has, it's created issues with supervision, it's created issues with uh, equality for teams, um, it's created issues with uh, volunteer coaches and how they get paid and how they, you know, their certifications and so forth. So um, this way we would have one assistant coach we could do it where if you have two assistant coaches, they could kind of have co-assistant coaches, and we've done that uh, with some of our other teams. Uh, but this at least puts uh, some budget money in for those positions, so we don't have to worry about, or hopefully don't have to worry about any other fundraising for any of those positions. Um, we also wanted to add an additional sum of money uh, to uh, the athletic supply budget. Um, again, another thing that we've seen is uh, a proliferation of some teams trying to cover uh, costs for fees and dues and, and so forth. Um, I'd like to get that out of the discussion so that no teams would have to do that. I think if we add uh, a number of approximately about $10,000 to uh, Ms. Rosetto's athletic budget, uh, we can kind of take care of a number of those smaller issues so we don't have our teams fundraising for things that could be paid for within the district budget. Um, I actually had a couple of items that I don't have on the slide um, that I just wanted to mention. Uh, we did have one additional security guard in the budget. Uh, that is really for the elementary schools. We've had a number of situations this year where we've had absences of a security guard and have not had somebody to fill it, so we're kind of filling it with um, eight teacher aides. So this way we would have a full-time person who could cover for any individual elementary uh, staff member that would be out. Uh, if all of our elementary people are in, that person could then cover at the middle school and the high school, and usually we have somebody <laughs> in one of those buildings who uh, we're looking for coverage. Uh, we are adding a vocational ed program. In addition to our BOCES career ed programs, this vocational ed program would provide a CDAS option for classified students. Did I get that right, Ms. Love? <laughs> um, so that's also gonna be in for next year. Uh, and one last thing, uh, we've been looking into a universal pre-K program. Um, so we are actually gonna go out with an RFP for that program, we have some grant funding that we can utilize for that. Uh, it would only accommodate up to 93 students based on the amount of money that we have, uh, and it's at a certain rate, so we have to see through this RFP if we have uh, any programs within the district, any of our current uh, preschool programs who might be able to take in the kids for that amount of money. So. Uh, I'll be going through that process and hopefully have some results in another month or so to share with the board. But I'm um, hoping to get that off the ground also for next year. Elementary class sizes. So I think we've kind of finished our main kindergarten registrations for next year. And our numbers are kind of more solidifying. Uh, at Covert, we have co total current possible enrollment of 45 at kindergarten. So that would be two sections, and we are graduating three sections of kindergarten, so we could be down one section at Covert School. 
at Hewitt, um, we have two grade levels of concern. One is grade four. Uh, at grade four, we currently have 77 students, um, but only three sections. So there's a couple of classes which are over 25. Uh, that would add in one more section at that fourth grade going into fifth grade for next year. So that could be a possible plus one if those numbers stay. Uh, also at Hewitt, we have a projection of three sections of kindergarten with a total right now of 70 students. So still at least six students away from splitting. So it looks like we're a good chance we're going to have three sections of kindergarten there. And we are graduating four sections. So that would be a reduction of one section at Hewitt. So that with the fourth grade would leave them with the same number of sections next year as this year. At Riverside, uh, our current grade three has a total of 25 students, but in two sections, they started the year with more than 25 students. So if there is no change there, that could be a reduction in sections of minus one. Uh, Kindergarten is also a wild card. Right now, it looks like we have 25 enrollees. So we have one fifth grade section graduating. This would be one incoming kindergarten section. But if we get another one more student, that grade would split also. And we would be plus one. Um, Watson, projecting no changes for next year. Their total enrollment at this point looks like 41 for kindergarten. And at Wilson, we have a projection of three sections of kindergarten uh, with 71 students total. Uh, and they are graduating four sections. So there's a possibility of a reduction of one section at Wilson. So right now, looking at all these pieces, we would be net minus three. Again, we're still very early on. We budgeted for the same number of sections that we have for this year, which is 78. Um, we could be down as much as three sections for next year. So for our capital projects, we do this planning every year. Um, we actually have um, the board does walkthroughs in the summer uh, before our schools open for the year. Uh, and then we do them again at this time of the year, just before our budgets. Uh, to kind of take a look at our buildings uh, throughout the year. We have requests from the principals and also as part of their uh, budgets. We ask them different capital projects they'd like to see for the, for the coming year. Uh, we do have declining debt service in this budget. Uh, we had a reduction last year in our debt service of $787,000. And this year we have a reduction of 548000 in our debt service. So what we're going to do this year with that 548 is add it right back to the uh, capital transfer to capital projects line that we had reduced last year, uh, which was one of the ways we were able to keep a flat tax levy for last year. Uh, and we're going to go back to $1.8 million in our transfer to capital line to cover capital projects. So our last bond issue also was back, uh, we voted in March of 2013, so almost 10 years ago. Uh, we are still looking at a possible bond issue. We're starting that process. Uh, I've spoken to the PTA, the principals about that to kind of get that process started. Uh, we will have our architects in. Uh, we're going to be doing an RFP for new architects or possibly the same, but we'll, we'll get some responses on, on an RFP and continue to move forward with that. Um, so I mentioned our proposed budget has 1.8 million in for next year. Uh, what I wanted to do tonight is to kind of go through our current year project status, which we've completed uh, just about all of our projects from last year, uh, and then kind of go through some of the things we we're talking about for next year. So starting with Covert School, we added uh, a new drop ceiling and lighting in the auditorium this year, as well as uh, playground replacement. For next year, we're looking for new LED lighting in hallways and in five different classrooms. We're also looking at floor replacements in four classrooms. At Hewitt School, uh, we did the bathroom floor replacements in both the boys and girls bathrooms in 10 of those bathrooms. 
Uh, we did an installation of drop ceilings in five classrooms, which we've been trying to do each year at Hewitt. Uh, and we had a playground replacement. For next year, we're looking at putting in a primary playground, which is being funded by a grant from Senator Kaminsky. Uh, that grant has been pre-approved, but it's in kind of the final stages of approval by the dormitory authority. Uh, we have a parking lot replacement that if we choose to go with that one, it would be $407,000. We've gotten a quote on that. That would be to replace the entire uh, parking area, the driveway and the entire back of Hewitt. So that would be a very large project. So whether that stays here or we're looking at that in the bond issue, that's a, that's a big chunk. Uh, we're looking at floor replacements in three classrooms. Uh, we're looking to abate the faculty room floor and replace that. Uh, the ceiling installations, we would like to continue with another five classrooms. Uh, we wanted to do the drop ceiling installation in the hallways to kind of clean up the look of the hallways. Uh, we wanted to do some replacement of auditorium ceiling tiles. And we wanted to put in place uh, an auditorium projector and speakers. So this you may have heard before. Uh, we have this in, in three of our buildings. Uh, we had wanted to add a separate projector uh, permanently. Um, we tried to look at kind of a drop down speaker hanging over the seating was not looking very good. We have uh, looked at a rear projection system. All of these systems, what I would think would be fairly inexpensive or not that expensive, turned out to be very expensive undertakings. So, uh, but we have a vendor, uh, which we've got a quote, I believe is for approximately $100,000. So about $35,000 or so for each of three buildings. So that's one of those things we'll, that we'll see in this budget. Hewitt's one of those. At Riverside School, we also did a playground replacement. Uh, we also replaced their play field with the turf area. Um, and I can tell you, all of these playground replacements that we've done have been uh, received extremely well by the buildings. Uh, it is amazing to see how many people utilize this turf area. When we had the playgrounds with the rubberized surface, people liked it, but with the turf, it just seems to draw more and more people. They also loved some of the additional space that we've put in place, uh, like at Covert School, at uh, Riverside School, um, and even at Hewitt, we added another ex some little bit extra, so turf. So that turf area really draws people in. We've seen it here at the high school ever since we redid the track in the backfields. There are people here 24 side. They really, <laughs> they come by, they, they hang, some of the kids hang out here at night. We have to chase them away sometimes, but they love just hanging out on a turf field. It's, it's amazing. Um, we're looking for next year. We're looking for uh, some of the epoxy flooring in five bathrooms at Riverside. Uh, we want to look at replacement uh, of some of the flooring in the faculty rooms. We want to do some painting of the blacktop, um, create a little play area. Uh, we want to update three of the classroom bathrooms. Uh, we need to update the principal's bathroom. Um, we want to power wash the ornate molding around the exterior of the building. Um, so we have a number of about 42,000 in for this, very expensive, but this is the real detail molding along the top. So this is not your basic power washing. Uh, this is something we have to be very careful of so we don't destroy it. So that's, wh that's why there's a large expense for that. And then we're also looking to paint the pillars in, in the front of the building. At Watson School this year, uh, we replaced some LED lighting in three classrooms. Uh, we also replaced the gym ceiling and added new lighting for the gym. Um, we're looking at next year is to improve the exterior lighting in the courtyard. Uh, I want to do some repairs to the walkway in the alley behind the school uh, to replace the stage curtains and to repair and replace the walkway in front of the building. And then we also have that auditorium projector and speakers for Watson as well. At Wilson School, 
uh, we did resurface and upgrade their outdoor basketball court, uh, along with doing some other repairs on their playground surfacing and the blacktop. Uh, for next year, we're looking to completely replace the playground um, and replace the blacktop area of the playground with turf, similar to what we've done at the other elementary schools. Um, this was this playground was in a little better shape than the others, uh, and so for that reason, along with funding considerations, we held off on that until this year. Um, I know one of the things that we're talking about uh, with Wilson as we get into a bond issue discussion is a possible increase in the building size. If that happens, it will go to the south of the building, so that building would not increase to the north. So any replacement, any upgrade we do to the playground should not be impacted by any other possible uh, changes we make to that building. Uh, we have again that auditorium projector and speakers for Wilson. Uh, we wanted to finish some main office renovations. We had started some of those we want to finish. Uh, and then bathroom floor replacements in all of the boys and girls bathrooms at Wilson as well. Southside Middle School, uh, we had done floor tile repairs in four classrooms, uh, as well as upgrading the nurse's office bathroom and a special ed office bathroom, uh, and we re replaced the bleachers by the track. For next year, uh, first thing we're doing is looking at replacing the entrance um, with an ADA compliant entrance using Assemblywoman Griffin's grant. Uh, again, that process is in the final stages of approval. Uh, that's really adding a handicap ramp to the front of the building. We had some um, concerns about the historical nature of that. We got some comments from the state uh, because it is considered a historical building. Uh, their concerns is the type of railings we put on the handicap ramp, so we're working with the state and the architect to make sure that those are all in compliance. Uh, we're looking to replace the elevator. These are really some substantial repairs that uh, we need to make. Uh, we had the elevator was actually out of service for about a week last week. Uh, we had to get some repairs in there. Uh, but that's a, a very important piece uh, because we do have the three floors. Uh, and any time we have a student who's uh, on crutches or disabled can't get up the stairs, it becomes real problematic. So we really need to make sure that those are, those are working. Uh, we wanted to look at repairing or replacing the asphalt in the parking lot. Again, this is another large paving project. Um, looking at replacing the uh, auditorium ceiling. I uh, want to remove and replace some floor tile in a classroom. Uh, some updating of the walls of the principal's office. Uh, some additional paving in the back under the bleachers by the track repair of an air conditioning unit, placing carpet in room 118, which is a large band room, chorus room, uh, one of the large music rooms there. Um, we want to look at repainting and lining the track at the middle school. Um, and we're looking at a drop ceiling in, in rooms 118 and 120. So some of the music rooms to put in drop ceilings there, those have been problematic. Um, Again, uh, repainting and lining the track at the middle school, as we discuss um, possible bond projects, if we are going to do something more with the middle school um, in terms of that track or that field, we may want to hold off on that particular project included in the bond issue if we're going to do other substantial repairs because that would be a fairly significant um, budget allocation if we were to just paint it and line it and then need to replace it in a, in a couple of years. At the high school uh, for this year, we did some renovations of the attendance office and the two lobby bathrooms. Uh, we also did some repairs and upgrades in the nurse's office. For next year, uh, we also, with that same grant from Assemblywoman Griffin, looking to replace the high school entrance with an ADA compliant entrance. Uh, what we're talking about here for the high school, instead of having one ramp, is to kind of build up the whole front of the building so it would just kind of meet the front uh, of the building. So there would be no ramp 
it would just, the whole front of the building would just be raised slowly uh, to come up to the level of the, that first stoop. Um, we're looking to repaint and line the high school track as well. Uh, that we will not be replacing <laughs> next year. Um, the uh, moving the network servers to the first floor. Uh, we've had this in prior budgets. We've never been able to get this kind of off the ground. So there's a lot of logistics involved. Um, the monies keep kind of getting reallocated for other projects uh, that come up during the year. So uh, I wanted to have an allocation for that in this budget. Uh, we have similar issues with the one elevator in this building as well, um, as far as an elevator replacement. Uh, so some major repairs there. Um, in the wood shop, we're looking for a new exhaust fan for the paint room. And we're looking to do some painting in the science research room. Some other projects in the district for next year, we're looking at the uh, replacement of the reception desk in the, in the um, main entrance to the administration building, as long as some bathroom renovations to the uh, women's bathroom. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that we, with many of these projects, we have uh, asbestos abatements needed and air sampling that's re required. So we need to have some, you know, an allowance for those <coughs> needs during the capital during the capital projects. So that's that's all of our capital projects. Um, again, where we stand in the budget right now is at a four and a quarter percent increase. Uh, the funding that we have in place is for about 3.99%. So we, we've been looking at that as our goal to get down there. Uh, so in, in these discussions tonight and on the 24th, um, we will kind of refine our numbers and we will get that budget number down there. I, I don't have any uh, concerns about doing that. I think we will have that whether it's in some of the sections, the classroom sections that uh, I talked about earlier, we might be down three sections there. We also have a number of retirements that are coming in. We'll have a better idea of that next week. Our teachers are required to let us know by March 15th if they're going to be leaving us at the end of this year. So uh, we have heard about some and uh, we're expecting a couple more to come in. So we'll have a better idea about that um, on March 24th. So. Uh, between those things, I think we'll be able to get that budget down to 3.99% without too much difficulty. Again, the increase in the tax levy would be about 2.1%, which will be under our tax levy cap for next year. <laughs> Heavy piece of paper. Heavy piece of paper. So with that, I don't know if we have any questions. budget. It has a lot of new things in it and things that we've been looking for for years. So thank you very much. I'm excited about the um, addition of a new foreign language, uh, some new teams, uh, coaches. It just it has a little bit of everything and, and all of the board tours obviously turned out to be um, uncovering some good things. So thank you for everything. Just a couple of questions r related to those things. Um, when you roll out a new language and now students have already kind of pre-committed to the foreign language that they would be taking in the year following. Is the Italian going to start at the middle school or the high school level? Um, probably Dr. Santino, I'm asking this question of you. Um, and, uh, you know, how, how do we, um, you know, because we have to wait for everything to go through, how do we kind of get that information out to students for choice? Um, if it's okay, I think I'll answer that one. Oh, gosh, sure. This is Jeannie. Um, so the intent, for the, this language offering and some of the, the minor details are still being worked out um, with Mr. Murphy. Um, but the intent would be for that any student who hasn't previously taken a foreign language, perhaps they were foreign language exempt through the Committee of Special Education, they're now high school age and possibly um, ready to, to try a language and we wouldn't want them to be precluded from doing so. Um, at the high school level, so that's why we're having a year one offering. Additionally, at times we have students move in from other dis other states who did not have a foreign language option as a middle schooler, 
And so this allows them to go into a year one option for language, again, as a high school student not having previous exposure. And if this course is available to other students, of course, that information will be forthcoming, but we know for at least those two groups of students, it would be very helpful. That's great, thank you. Um, also, in terms of the uh, assistant coaches, we're, I, I took what you said as we're doing one across the board for every team that does not already have an assistant coach. So it's regardless of how many students are on um, a team. So we've gotten kind of feedback that track has, you know, so many more students than others, but we're still going to be adding one per team at this time. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, for Hewitt, with the um, paving of the parking lot, which seems like a big project, and I'm glad to do because I know we have the sinkhole issue there. I'm just curious as to the timing of that um, and if it's going to impact our ability to hold ACE there this summer. Yeah, we are still looking at that. Uh, we need to make, make that decision fairly soon uh, on if we're going to continue with summer school at Hewitt or if we're going to move it to the middle school, which would be the other building it's been at, and that's where we would move it if we needed to. Uh, so this is part of you know, our, our discussion, if we're going to do Hewitt, we would probably move everything to the middle school um, and then probably hold off on some of those middle school projects. Some of them we would be doing, we could kind of work around them, but, um, and if we're going to do the middle school projects, we may need to hold off, we may need to keep everything at Hewitt for another year um, and then swing everything over after everything's done at the middle school and then go back and do Hewitt the following year. So. That, that, that's part of the okay. overall discussion. All right, thank you. Also, I assume that we're going to continue our um, contract with the Central Synagogue for Wilson School next year? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, in the other district-wide things, uh, Kelly had visited the greenhouse and I had visited St. Agnes's trailer, and I'm just curious if those, um, I don't know if there were any greenhouse ones, but I know that I had some requests for St. Agnes. Are those also going to be considered? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm not sure about Mrs. Barry if she had that question. Yeah, so. um, Mr. Scalisi and I toured the greenhouse with Mr. Van Zandt, and there were no major capital requests this year. It was more um, possibly about furniture for the classroom, maybe, but it was an we didn't have any major capital requests from the greenhouse, but we should still add that to our discussion on the 24th. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then my last question was about the middle school. Um, I know we had talked about with Mrs. McGinn renovating special ed rooms um, in preparation for rise classes coming. I'm just curious if we're still, I didn't see that on the list. So I just wanted to make sure that was still being done. We are still looking at that. I think we still, we get the architect in yet? Take a look at that. who is one of our architects, he actually said that um, the Ken had taken a look at it, but he wasn't sure if he made it out to the building yet. So as soon as I get that information and um, find out whether or not it's bearing and we can take it, I'll have an answer for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're looking at a couple of different options. One obviously requires an architect. That's why I asked John to kind of respond to that. If we can't do that, we'll have to work at, uh, we'll have to look at a different option. Uh, which may not really require any capital expenditure. We wanted to try this option first because it would be the best. It would be in the same location as, as the other rooms. So that's why. Thank you. That's my question. Thank you. Dr. Sampino, for, with the interactive TVs, I know we've been rolling them out for a few years now. Um, in the beginning, it was more, I believe, if they were breaking or being replaced, it was a kind of a pun as we were replacing them. Mm -hmm. Is there at this point a more structured kind of rollout in terms of, I know th I, we visited the high school, Ms. Messier and myself, and I know Mr. Murphy had mentioned that we're installing some here over the summer too. Um, I guess my overall question is where are we on the timeline in terms of where we can be? Sure, um, I know that Mr. Anderson goes to each building, tours the building with each principal, and then they identify what 
smart boards need to be replaced in, in the order of priority. Okay. And we also try to u utilize everything. So even if there's a board that's, you know, a little on the older side, we try to put that in maybe a smaller space and we really try to use everything. But Mr. Anderson um, just identified the boards that need, and we're getting close. Uh, you know, we really are. They're, they're amazing. They don't need as many, you know, with the smart board, the technology, we had to have a separate projector, we had to have separate light bulbs, there was a software upgrade, so it does make more sense. But again, I was, we, Mr. Bartels and I were talking, we started that rollout um, two assi three assistant superintendents ago, yeah. <laughs> you know, with the uh, Garrity. Yeah. So it was, it was, some of them are really quite old, so we have to move forward. So I don't have an exact number for you, I can get that for you if you would like. Okay. And the professional development, I think they're, the teachers are getting some training once they receive. Correct. It's meeting. ongoing. We are fortunate to have model school days, which is through Nassau BOCES, um, and we have a consistent professional developer in-house, so we work with her. Um, it's a lot of, you know, she gets trained and then she is able to work with those teachers, um, either scheduled time on prep or pushing in, so we are very fortunate to have days put in um, to have on-demand professional development on any of our technology, including the transition to Chromebooks, which again, um, fifth grade, uh, now five through 12, all have new Chromebooks. We're working on a timeline for grades three and four. They'll have them by the end of this year, which is very exciting. And then we'll work on getting um, the rest of the grade levels by the fall will be all Chromebook. Thank you. Mr. Bartels, I was taking notes while you mentioned the business and coding electives. I apologize. Were they for the middle school or the high school? Those are the high school. The high school, yeah. okay. And we're offering both in both areas? We're looking we're to working. add for 23, We're 24. working on that, actually. We had a meeting. Um, we're going to be, uh, we had a great meeting with Mr. Murphy and Mr. Gamash um, just recently. What we'd like to do is set up um, more of a continuum, K to 12. So we're pulling together some people from the elementary, middle, and high school to work on how we could best flow, because you gotta remember, we, even if we had something in place at the elementary, they were on laptops. Those laptops are now with our teachers based on COVID and everything kind of shifts and we kind of have to go with the flow. So we're looking at what could work with the Chromebooks and it's great to have an articulation meeting um, K to 12. So that's what we are starting with that. It's a process. So we're working towards that. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, and to echo Ms. Hackett, I thank you for this. I think there's a lot of additions here that the community has expressed interest for um, boys volleyball, girls golf, and the assistant coaches, um, as well as the world language edition. So um, regarding the grants for the primary playground at Hewitt, I know you said it's with the dormitory authority. Are we confident you think that we could get it in? And then how would that potentially impact if we do move forward with the paving project? Uh, we will get it in. It's we have to spend the money and then we get reimbursed for it anyway. So, uh, but at this point, we, it's it's basically been approved. It now just needs to be approved for the financing. So it's really not a problem of approving the project. It's okay. the financing piece that's, you know, the back end of it. But uh, we have to pay for it and get reimbursed for it anyway. So. Okay. And is that similar to the handicap ramps at the middle school and the high school? Yes. Or? Okay. Terrific. Well, they're younger in the process, right? The, the ramps. Was the playground process prior to Yeah, the playground is a little further yeah. ahead in that, in that process. So. And then the auditorium projectors at the three elementaries. Um, I know Watson's ceiling, as you mentioned, was replaced last summer. So is, is that going to be? No, this doesn't, this isn't from, the, I believe the, what they're looking at is a rear projection okay. system. Uh, we've talked about hanging it from the ceiling. Right. Uh, I had also asked about putting it on the back wall. But I guess the distance is just too far. Um, but they, they're looking at a rear projection system, which would all be mounted kind of on the stage, would be out from Got the, it. the front. So all right, no, perfect. Im no impact there. So, oh, so that's what the $35,000 is allotted for? Yes. Oh, that's great. Isn't that also um, happening with Colbert, too? Yes. Colbert oh. asked for it, Wilson mm -hmm. asked for it. Wilson Q would. Hewitt I think it's Hewitt, Watson, and Wilson, right? Cover. Yeah. 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 So we should add that here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did the walkthrough at um, at Covert. I was waiting for the final piece being the PTA meeting where I could ask for PT 
EPA suggestions as well as sort of public suggestions mm -hmm. to add into the report. But I, I did have um, the walkthrough this week with Mr. Scalisi, and they did mention the projector being mm -hmm. one of it, some epoxy floors. There's a few things that I don't see on here. Okay. So I don't know if I should address it now or wait until I hear from the PTA and the public as well. That's normally what we used to do. Um, we can address them now. We can just put them, get them added to the list. Right. Well, one was the projector. I don't see it, but they had said that it was going to be installed, right, Mr. Scalisi? Yeah. yeah. It's not, it doesn't appear to be on the covert um, page. Do you know, is the Hewitt one different than the others? Or is that? Right, right. Rear projection as well. They're all looking at rear projection because of the fact that the ceiling is so high. In order to hang it from the ceiling, you'd have a pole that would come down by about 20 feet. And to get that that um, that line of sight to the screen would just be, it would be a lot of weight hanging from the ceiling. And like with Hewitt, Hewitt's ceiling is curved, so we have no way of getting above it to actually uh, attach it to the ceiling. So the rear projection would mount on the back side of the, of the stage, shining forwards to project the image. Uh, so have we ever seen this in operation? I personally have, yes. Um, I don't know if, th if anybody. No, no, I'm just saying, has anybody seen that it works? It's clear. It's, yeah, it you is. Know, it's not blurry or anything like no, that. No, I actually saw it at a, uh, a play production where uh, it was rear projection doing the sets. So if the bid was for a hundred thousand, and we have the three schools besides Covert for thirty-five, yeah, I'm, okay. I'll, ver I'll verify those. Okay. Which schools is? I'm pretty sure it was three schools, but okay. I'm, I do know Covert was one of them. They've been so. asking for a couple of years. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay. So I'll, let me, let me well, double check. I guess when the principals are here in next meeting. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Let me double check, make sure which buildings it is, and make sure either it's three or four, and make sure we have the right ones. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. If I, if I may, the other buildings have projectors in them because. They're uh, an auditorium gymnasium. So a few years back, when they put the sound systems in for the gym classes, they also put the projection projector in, and they're mounted. That's why theirs is. Uh, so does, Wat does Watson, Watson, have Watson have it? Watson has it. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe Watson should be covered, not Watson. Right. I think. Sorry. <laughs> that all came from a, a grant. Carol, is that? Was that all? Those yeah. Th and those other schools. Yeah, that was a pep grant. Right. Pep grant. That's right. Anymore? Um, I think okay. there, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Scalisi, but I think there was an installation of new epoxy floors installed um, in the bathroom at Covert in some of the bathrooms, or they're being installed. Is that right? Yes, yes that, was, that was the first bathrooms we did. We did the two uh, the boys and girls gang bathrooms. Okay. As well as uh, we did a couple of them over at uh, Hewitt. That was the start. And we've been moving forward to that was two years ago. That's why okay, that's why it's not on here. Yeah, it, it made it seem like it was new. The <laughs> <laughs> um, mural has begun there on the um, on the wall from PTA as well. It just started. That looks great. Um, and they do utilize at Covert all of their uh, spaces very creatively. Um, I don't know if at this meeting we were going to talk about if there was a budget, what the wish lists were. Or we're waiting to do that at a later meeting. Um. Uh, I mean, for a, the bond. a bond. For sorry. the bond, a, a different meeting. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So if we're looking so for something for next year, I'd like to know that and we'll include it on this list. But it's yeah, no, um, they did mention the oven in the um, cafeteria is old and maybe needed replacing. That was at Covert. Okay. Is it really truly that much of them? We left, the, we left an old stove There's in There's an old stove yeah. in there. Yeah, I don't think we replaced all of the equipment. Oh, okay. No, there. we okay. didn't. It's just uh, cabinetry. It's cabinetry. Wall. And then I did Watson as well, and I think there's um, one thing that was not on the list in terms of the airphone system for the back door that they use for um, Project Rate and for deliveries, like from any of the. Um, which, which building? It's Watson. 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 We did that one as well. So I believe, Ronnie, is that the one we have it incorporated in the smart bond? Do you know? If camera for the 
back of uh, Watson. So one of the other things we're going to be talking about soon, I'm you know, working on it kind of behind the scenes, but it'll come to the board, is uh, smart bond money. Um, so we had gotten a grant a number of years ago. Uh, we used a portion of it. We have to go back to use the rest of it. So we're in the process of putting together uh, a plan for a lot of technology upgrades. That's going to be part of that. Uh, we're hoping to have that again probably right after we kind of clean up the budget and put that away. We'll have uh, the smart bond to talk about, uh, and then we can do that and hopefully get started on that for the summer as well. Okay. But that's that's more technology type security. Got it. Yeah. The only other thing that I, that I don't see on here is Ms. Pascarella did point out they have some of the most beautiful artwork in that building. There's a whole section on one of the walls that has um, plaques that are attached to a wooden board and they are coming loose and I think they need some repair on that. Um, she mentioned it. We can do that. Just to maintain it so it doesn't get into a state where, you know, mm -hmm. it would fall apart. Thank you. in funding to sports, um, to the sports budgets, to adding more assistant coaches, I think is going to be very valuable, as well as adding on some of those varsity teams. I'm also really excited about the prospect of adding universal pre-K, even if it is only for 93 students. Um, I think that's a, a great step in the right direction to you know, hopefully give access to some students who may not have had access to pre-K program to help ready them for um, you know, their, their K through 12 education. So thank you so much for looking into that. I did have one question about um, the addition to AIS. I know last year there was an increase to the number of math AIS teachers um, that were hired at the elementary level. Do you happen to remember how many math AIS teachers were hired last year? I do. Um, back in 2021, we hired one, and last year we hired one for a total of four. So I can give you a little rationale of why I have requested another one, if you'd like. Um, some of the best feedback we have gotten, um, Ms. Hood and I have gone to all the buildings. We've spoken to the teachers, we've spoken to AIS, we've spoken to the principals. And some of the best things that they say is they love the consistency. Prior to the additional AIS, there was a lot of sharing between the buildings. Um, so they love the consistency within the building. They're able to go to morning meetings. They're able to get to really know the kids, work with the teachers, work with the principal. It's been wonderful. Currently at Riverside School, we have two teachers going to the one school. So what I would like to do is what, in talking with the building principals and Ms. Hood and Mr. Bartels, is to get one person there full time and then every building would have one consistent AIS math teacher in the building. And then with the additional time, because Riverside is a small school, we were hoping that then that teacher would be able to work with and schedule some time with newer staff, new to grade, we're gonna have a lot of new teachers, um, work with um, looking at the data, working on assessments. So we don't have like coaches, you know, instructional content people at the elementary level. We use our AIS teachers as our content specialists and both in reading and in math, they will be a part of year two of also school-wide enrichment training. So when we're looking to differentiate, not just for, for struggling learners, they're the also the go-to for the ones when we wanna differentiate um, on different levels. So that's part of the rationale on why we're adding um, a math. And then the reading person, we also have a split reading person, um, figured I would might as well just tell you, <laughs> in, um, Wilson and you at school, and again, the principal has asked if they could have the person full time. And we thought the same type of thing, it would be great then to have another person be added, and then with that additional time, we could really schedule, we have a lot of new staff, even new AIS staff, that person can work with scheduled time, and again, review student data. Are the interventions that are being done the right intervention? Is there training that could be recommended? Um, push into lessons, you know, and that goes for both reading and math. So again, we have a great AIS team. I just really want to make them a bit stronger um, in the buildings and be a more presence. So that's why I had asked. 
So in, in the other buildings um, that don't currently have split AIS teachers, will those teachers still have time then to perform the same function? I'm hoping so, especially when we look at the enrollment and especially now that so that the other the two won't be split. And again, we have to see what my priority would be, what we would discuss with the building principals would be, okay, are there any per people new to the grade? So even if we had to do a schedule where maybe that we have one person with more time, then they could schedule time with that person. So I'd work with the building principals. Um, they were excited about having someone really consistent in their building. The teachers really um, appreciate having a person there. They're there for when they're reviewing the unit tests. They're there for when they're looking at NWEA. They're there when they have a parent call. Um, so they, they like having that person available. It was difficult having the shared staff um, for AIS. So I'm really, you know, I've been asked, Mr. Bartels could tell you, I, I think I've put a additional AIS, especially math on for like 15 years, hoping that we'd get to this point. And um, it, it's exciting, as I agree with you. We've lived through, many of us here a long time, of budget restrictions. It was always no, John, <laughs> you've been here a long time. We've never had, um, even able to have conversations like this. It's always been, well, we have to add this. What can we cut to add it? And those are horrible conversations, like, because you don't want to cut anything, but to be able to have these conversations where we're able to give all, you know, give everything we can um, in planning with our, our, our teachers and our principals and our staff, um, it's just incredible. So um, I understand if we can't, but I, really believe that um, making our team uh, stronger is just going to be a benef benefit. So, And then for the middle school AIS teacher that's being added, is this teacher going to service grades six and seven, or what is the rationale for needing additional AIS at the middle level? So we were actually thinking of piloting uh, somewhat of a co-teaching type model within um, the middle school. We're still working with Ms. McGinn on that, and we hope to have more information to share um, on the 24th. Okay, so this person might also be a special ed. Could be. If it's <laughs> teaching. It could be. We're looking really to, um, again, provide more opportunities where it could be small group instruction, um, targeted for the kids, um, and um, this way for some students that is enough support and they might be open up to other support, um, other uh, choices if, the, if that suffices as their AIS in terms of a level one. There might be children who need this additional support class, um, and we'll have to work it, you know, we're working it out. We're trying to figure it out with Ms. McGinn and her staff over there. Thank you. The only other question I had was with the addition to the level one language class at um, the high school. Um, I understand that we're adding Italian, but I was curious why Spanish one wouldn't be an option as well, considering that, you know, even though students may be language exempt in, at the middle level, we do invest a lot of time and money into our FLESS program, um, you know, grades one through five. So kids do have some exposure to Spanish. It seems like it could also be a logical step for some if th there's a possibility of offering that as well. And I love the option of adding a new language in because we only have Spanish and French presently. But I just was kind of curious about why a Spanish one class could or that could or could not be an option as well. It could be, it could be. We're still looking at that information and student interest. So it hasn't been a, a final decision that it, it's definitely going to be Italian. It's, I think the um, idea is to introduce a third language. So there's that option for students. Um, but certainly uh, we're still considering all the options because it's a little bit early on to make that final decision. But at this point, that's what we were looking at. Thank you. And the one last thing I had, sorry, was just more of um, a comment on Riverside Capital Projects. They list painting of the blacktop to create a play area. Um, last year, the covert PTA did purchase a bunch of stencils for their own blacktop. And I do believe that Riverside had asked if they could borrow the stencils. And our PTA did take a vote and said we'd be happy to lend them the stencils. They would just have to purchase their own paint which I think costs about $1,500. So that's a big difference between what's listed here. And I, well, I can't currently speak for the covert PTA because I'm no <laughs> longer the president. Um, they did say yes last year. So I'm, I'm sure that yes would still apply if that's you know an option. I toured Riverside as well. And I know Mr. Walter mentioned that to me when I was touring the building. Um, so maybe when he's here next week, we can bring that. When we're going over Riverside's list, we can talk about that. He definitely mentioned the stencils. I just forget the rationale as to why he was asking for this particular um, request. So 
That's it, thank you. I just had one more follow up in terms of the language option at the high school. I meant to ask this before. Um, with the uh, American Sign, Sign Language option, I know there had been some discussion in the past in order to make it uh, fulfill the requirement that we were looking into possibly having someone from BOCES who could do a virtual, because I understand that the person we have is not um, certified, so it can't count as a language, and I don't know if we ever got the answer as to whether or not we could get it to be a language that would fill, fulfill a requirement. We could do that. I believe the, the mindset behind offering it as an elective is that the students who are in it currently would take another year of it possibly and get elective credit, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be offered as a foreign language. You know, that's, it's almost like two separate ways of offering the class. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we could certainly look into that further. I think by offering both, we're giving opportunity for, for both avenues, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we couldn't circle back and look at that again, certainly. I think that piece is important for students that may have a learning deficit when it comes to the written language or the spoken language, and that particular language, if it did fulfill the requirement, is something that with children with certain um, deficits may be able to use and they need a language going into a lot of the colleges. So that was part of the discussion before and I'm happy that it's introduced, I, I'm very appreciative. I just wanted to know if we could maybe have it be an option for those kids. We certainly could look, you know, could certainly look at that. I think um, it depends on what the needs are of the students because for example, students with gross or fine motor deficits have difficulty with sign. Um, students with, uh, who, have, who are, uh, benefit from visual representation of basic um, language in a year one language, that might actually be easier for a student with fine motor issues. So it really depends on the needs of the student. I think both options are wonderful. Right now we have a plan to offer both through two different avenues, so it would just be a matter of looking at the sign language as a, as a language option in addition, which we'd, we'd have to go back to the high school team and talk to them. I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, John, I have one more question. Um, we've had some conversations about PYT, and I'm just curious as to what, if we expanded our IB program into the primary years, what's the budget implication for expanding a program that we've already, I know we've invested money into at the middle years on the um, secondary level, but I was just curious what that budget implication might be. Well, we are looking at that. Um, we need to do some staff development for that first. Uh, I think part of that will be during the next year to start with our administrators uh, and get them involved and have somebody kind of be a point person for that. Um, as far as the budget implications, I don't know if Sonia might have some information. I know she's worked with that program before. In terms of, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. In terms of the budget implications, it could it could range. It could vary. Um, it could go from anywhere around the ballpark of about fifty thousand, but that could change also. That's been a few years back, but moving forward, it could it, the range would be about fifty thousand, depending on a number of administrators, you know. But that would be about the ballpark. Those are kind of participation fees and everything yes. included with that. Yeah. yeah, that's somewhat similar to where our middle school is. And then we would have to appoint facilitators as kind of how we've done at the middle years um, program. We have the two facilitators there. We would have to appoint one or two primary years um, facilitators as well, I'm assuming. You, well, you would have a PYP coordinator um, but you would also have a coach, an elementary level coach to help facilitate in the professional development. Um, you also could have a professional developer come on site and provide training for all the staff here in-house, or they could uh, travel. So that would make implications on the budget also. Okay, thank you. We never talked about the budget as it related to that, so just curious. I, I have no idea how expensive something like that is. Or not, so thank you. All right, Martels. Uh, 
we were, you're talking about adding an additional security guard. In the past, we've talked about adding a security supervisor. Is that something that you're considering? Not yet, not anymore? It's something uh, I have been considering. Uh, I'd like to look at a couple of other options for that first uh, before going into that. Uh, we have a lot of other pieces that we're adding to this budget. Um, that would be another administrative piece. I'm more concerned about the actual security guard itself and having somebody here in the buildings to do that. So. Uh, we're working on the administrative piece separately, hopefully, so we don't have to worry about finding a full-time person to do security supervision. I think we we need to do, we need to work on that. Um, we need to kind of have a cohesive plan of security district-wide, because um, right now it's kind of building by building, um, and then we have our one uh, or one main roving person, and then somebody else on the weekends, but somebody kind of coordinating all of it, building by building. And making sure everybody's doing things uh, in accordance with protocols and, you know, similar things from one, one to the other. Okay. All right. Uh, the vocational education program is very exciting. Uh, can we get a little, maybe a little more detail next week? Is that possible? Are you developing that detail now or? Um, I don't know if Jeannie can give us any more on that now or on the vocational ed program. On the vocational ed program, do you have a little oh, sure. more detail on it? I, yeah, sure. So, um, his, historically here, students needed a vocational education program that would go really one of two areas. So it would either go through like a Barry Tech program through Nassau BOCES, or possibly um, it would be done in-house where our students in our self special class program would go with our teaching staff out into the community to uh, get work experience and community experience, travel training, things like that. The new, one of the, the new pathways to graduation, um, which is attached to the superintendent determination option for graduation, allows students who are classified <coughs> to earn a local diploma, <coughs> regardless of what uh, their scores were on the regents exam. So for example, if you passed all of your coursework, and you have vocational education training, which leads to a CDAS. What that means is you have an employability profile and you have 260 hours of training, um, a certain number of which need to be in the work environment. I believe it's 54 hours. Then we could petition the state. It's really like a notification to let them know that although the student was unsuccessful in earning certain scores on the regents, um, they have the combination of passing their coursework and having vocational education training. They're prepared for life after high school and we'd like them to earn a local diploma. And that's a really good option, uh, particularly for some of our students in our newer special class programs who are generally assessed, meaning they will sit for the Regents exam. And what's good about it, and I'll get to why we're looking to expand the program, what's good about this is students who might be on the cusp of being alternately assessed or generally assessed, we can um, have more of those students have access to a local diploma through this option. And so, but in addition, we need to make it accessible for them. The voc ed piece is very important. And if, for example, Barry Tech is not supportive enough, but perhaps what we have here uh, meets the needs for some of our students, but our students who are looking for this pathway need something a little bit more specified. We have uh, contracted with some agencies that specialize in this that will come and model our half-day BOCES program where, so if I'm in 11th grade and the rest of my cohort is going to BOCES, I'm going out at the same time, but with this agency to have specialized vocational training. And then we can ensure that the student will be successful in that program, it's supportive enough, and that in the 11th hour, if they need us to do a determination, we've ensured that they've earned these hours that they need, because it, when you're in 12th grade, you know you can't, you can't go back. It's like backwards planning. We wanna make sure that we cover every single one of our students. And so um, that would be the expansion. We do have to, um, work with the curriculum office, uh, with Dr. Zampino and Ms. Hood, just to come up with, it's typically worth three to four elective credits per year for students, so we can, uh, we can award that as, as a district for any students who participate in this. 
And again, it just gives um, guidance and the CSE and the high school the ability to look at students and say what's going to be the best match, a, a Barry Tech program, an in-house program, or a specified uh, program through one of these agencies. And so that would be the expansion, is to really put that customization in the hands of our, our staff, who know the kids best, and of course the parents, so that we can make sure that when they leave here, they have the best of everything, which would be training and preparedness for the world, but also the diploma. So. Amazing, what a great option already. Thank you. Um, I, I have a little bit more. I know we've talked about pre-K. It is <coughs> currently, they're offering three-year funding on it. Uh, it's, it's annual funding at this but point. Annual funding that expires in three years? That's what I've heard about the program. Uh, I hadn't heard that it expires. Okay. It, well, it I mean, we are meeting with our legislators, so it might be a good conversation to bring mm -hmm. up. So uh, that would be great. Uh, 93 students, great. I've, I've heard from many other districts. They, it doesn't reach that level. Every district is different, but I've heard more in the 40 numbers from most district uh district that offered up that number? Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're, we're still not exactly sure okay. how the calculation is done, but yeah, our number was 93. I, I know I was talking to Lindbrook, I think their number was 66. Uh, so it's not really sure how it's calculated, but yeah, I believe know, 93 Island, is a good, Island tree good is a number It's a small district us. there, yeah. 40, 41, so another great thing. Um, okay, what else we talk about? Coding in the high school. I know that pe people want more. <laughs> and we're working okay. on it. Yeah, so that's as, a I said, we're having a, uh, as I said, we're having a meeting, um, K-12, to to really kind of work on some articulation. Um, Mr. Gamash has been incredible, and we really want to work on and expanding it in, in a thoughtful way and different options for our students. That's so, right. Right. And I think the best thing to do, especially when we're at this point, is really to have the consistency. We've changed now to Chromebooks. We want to get our stellar teachers involved. We want to get our tech people at the, at the middle school involved, and we want to have our high school involved. So we really want to have a thoughtful plan going forward. It's great. It was very popular when we added it, but then it, it was like more and more. We want absolutely, more. So absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's great that we can look at it, and hopefully we can do something about it. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Barchelles, for many years we talked about improving the entrance to the high school. I believe we put it in the budget years ago. Mm -hmm. um, is there a possibility that we're going to do it? Um, we would have to take a look at it for the, for the main entrance of the high school? Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it. We planned it. Never planned these exact particulars. Right. Approved it. <laughs> and then never went forward with it. So, I mean, it's something I would like to talk about. Even sure. uh, even if you come up and say that we can't do it, let's put it in a bond. It's something we, we've, we've kind of already approved, but yet not pursued. Sure. We can absolutely look at that, especially with the changing the whole front of the building so we don't have that handicap issue anymore. So right. um, that would be a good time to do it. Right. We al we've also talked about adding a security booth in the middle of the parking lot as opposed to have the guard yes. sitting in a car. Mm -hmm. And then we've one, uh, one conversation has been about making the back entrance, uh, I guess, more visitor-friendly or to accept visitors in a, in a better way. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I'd like to go over that with uh, Ms. Love um, okay. a little bit. Uh, okay, we, okay. Ha we haven't really talked about that. I'm not even sure she even knows about that. <laughs> oh, well, when it was talked about, it seemed like it was a necessity. But yeah. okay, you're saying it may not be that it, necessity that it is. It may not be that necessity. Okay. I believe everybody still is coming in through the main entrance, um, which would not we would not need to create a separate entrance I th down there. Well, That's I'm just going back on why we created the back way of the building to make it more private, more accessible. Right. So, okay, that's just a conversation to have. Yeah, we'll, we'll have that conversation. We haven't, I don't think we've, we've had that yet. Um, I'm just going quickly down. At, at um, Hewitt, in, with the parking lot, are we including patching where the tree was and pa doing some of the, s the sinkholes? Is that included in that price? Yes. Okay, because that's a necessity that no sense in doing something. Yeah, this would be completely redoing basically all of the paved, pretty much all the paved area, or with the exception of one up by the building in the, no. by the field. That would be uh, repaving, taking everything down to, to the base and putting in a whole new parking lot. That would be the drive, the parking area behind the building, the P 
piece that goes to the, uh, the playground and the play area where the tree used to be, right. as well as where the picnic tables are. Okay. That whole section. Uh, Wilson, we, you know, we are considering, or the bond will consider adding room on the other side and maybe possibly blocking the entrance on that side. I don't know where we are on the plan. If that's, a po if that's something we'll, we will consider, we might have to enlarge the driveway on the other side of the building. Will we take that into consideration before we, we you know, do the playground over and, and such? We have, we have with our current ar architect, we had three or four uh, designs kind of drawn up. Uh, none of them would require a change in the driveway over by the playground. Uh, they would all continue to have a drive going around the building. It would push further south into the field. Uh, we would still be able to maintain the same size play field as they actually use by sh even by shifting it further south. Um, we've done some you know, aerial views and dimensions and sketches and with the architects and we can definitely move that entire width of the field down far enough Still, still, I think soccer uses that field now. So still yes. a, a, a full soccer? Full size. Okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprising when we first looked at it how much room on the south end of that field isn't used but is still wide enough to push the field further down. And maybe if they play down further, the grass will be better down there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that always gets so compacted. Um, at at one of the schools, I know you talked about the need of a po possibly adding an additional elevator. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, I know that's a tremendous amount of money. That right. would be a bond. but So we would still need to repair both. We still need to repair both elevators. Um, I think we really do need elevators, second elevators, at the middle school and the high school for exactly the reason that we had last week. When one is down, we still have requirements for students to get to the second floor. Um, the two elevators that we have uh, are ex extremely old. Um, we're gonna get some pretty good renovations to them, but that's not gonna guarantee that they won't be down from time to time. Um, so I think it's very important that we have second working elevators, especially in these buildings. Um, would also probably want to be looking at uh, elevators at the other buildings that need them that don't have them. So, for example, Hewitt School has one elevator on one side. Uh, we really should have one on the other side as well. Uh, I know they're looking for some additional space. I'm not sure if we're going to end up with that or not, but um, if we do, it would be in the same place that I would put an elevator, which is at the far end of that building towards the field. So. Um, if there is any additional space added to that building, that's kind of where it would go. Okay. Uh, and just to touch the numbers, the n your final number that you came up, does that include all the, everything, all the capital projects that you have listed or not necessarily? N no, all of the capital, if you were to add everything here together, you're going to be over the 1.8 million. R okay. I didn't, I didn't have the time to add. Yeah. So. Okay. So some of those things are just recommendations that you what you see that are necessary, but that we may not be able to fund until we go to a bond. Correct. It's, it's, okay. it's just a matter of trying to get everything down on paper. Um, if we missed anything, if you know any board members or any PTA or principals find something that you know we missed and, and isn't in here, we may need to add it in. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some things like relining the middle school track. If we're planning on redoing the entire thing, you know, in a bond issue, it really wouldn't make sense to throw that money into it. Uh, whether we have the summer program at the at Hewitt School or the middle school, that may change some of those projects, which ones we do at each of those buildings. So, you know, we, as we go through this process, we'll, we'll straighten that out and come to kind of a final number. That's why it's also good okay. to be doing a, having a bond discussion at the same time. Okay, very good. Right. Anybody else have something to add? All right, I think uh, that was a, a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, nobody's here to comment, so we, we will we'll pass that. Before we go into the policies, I'd just like uh, Miss Love to talk about the wellness night on um, 
March the 14th, because we won't have an opportunity to speak about it at our next meeting, because it's next week already. Yeah. Okay, so an email went out to our community to around this week to remind everyone that on March 15th from 6.30 to 9 p.m., we will be hosting a virtual wellness night. Uh, the day prior on the 14th, uh, an email will go out again to everyone in the community with the link for this event. Um, the speakers include Lorraine DeFiglio from the Long Island Safe Center. She will be uh, discussing internet safety. Dr. Carol Orris will be uh, speaking on identifying depression in children and how to support our children through those difficult times. Uh, Dr. Fuhr from Northwell Health will be discussing school refusal and anxiety, which is a, a pattern that we're seeing uh, particularly um, post-COVID or as we're hopefully coming out of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we will also be hearing from uh, Ms. Deborah Caputo from Sources of Strength. She'll be doing a program overview um, and talk about how uh, the program is being uh, implemented at the elementary, middle, and high school. And it is a program that focuses on hope and positivity. Our last presenters of the evening are our high school social workers, Jen Sedler and Kelly O'Brien, and they will be uh, presenting a session on mindfulness as well as uh, showing our Rockville Center con Continuum of Care, which is a presentation that the mental health staff, uh, Ms. Kelly Ramsey and myself, she, the, our director of guidance and myself put together to help inform parents on the supports we have available uh, through uh, the district to students, but then also some of the partnerships that we have um, in the community as well and what is available to our families um, in the realm of mental health. And again, the link for this evening will go out the day prior on March 14th uh, to all community members. So we, we welcome everyone to participate and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. And then just one more thing, our calendar denotes that the, Ed, the Ed Rockwell Center Ed Foundation night is the 12th that has been moved in case anybody doesn't know and the the new date or the the date it will happen is sunday april 3rd and the last the last day to get your t our tickets will be available is on 325 so we encourage everybody to look at that and uh, hopefully attend if, that, if that's a possibility thank you um all right I'd just like uh, uh i'd like to Approval of the minutes as listed on the agenda. We have policy to discuss. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> We're in stage three on uh, four different policies. Um, I'll ask any of the board members, so we'll go through the number and see if anybody has any concerns at this point. Uh, policy 2340, school board member ethics. Any questions? So I'll move that, move that up, Mary Lou. Policy number 4260, Evaluation of Superintendent of Schools. Discussion? All right, we'll move that up, Mary Lou. Policy 4261, Evaluation of the Superintendent of Schools, Appraisal Instrument. We'll move that up, Mary Lou. And uh, Policy 4270, Evaluation of Administrative Staff. We're good with that one, no questions. On stage four, th four is code of ethics of, for all board members and district personnel. Wouldn't this typically be part of the board action? So we're voting on that one tonight, yeah, correct? That's so, Michael, but that's okay. okay I'm, yeah, just, that's I'm just asking for a procedural question. So we should actually, um, I don't know what, what we should do now, but maybe should we amend that or should we just spot vote on it? Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes as listed no, on the agenda? No, John, I think we have to make a motion to approve that 6110. A vote on it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, can I have a vote to approve policy 6110, Code of Ethics for all board members and district personnel? So moved. Second. Any questions? Should we take a roll call? All yeah. in favor? Sure. Aye. 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 Have to, though. How do we find out if this? 
we approve it if we don't. Okay. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes as listed on the agenda? So moved. A second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to approve financial reports as listed on the agenda? So moved. A second? A second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to reprove, reprove, re approve receipt of financial reports as listed on the agenda? So moved. A second? I'm sorry, we also have the addendum for the PAR. Financial reports. Okay. What did I? We're not there yet. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve approve the receipt of financial reports as listed on the agenda? So moved. A second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to approve? Board actions as listed on the agenda and the addition, is the, is the, uh, yeah, that's the addendum. Amend addendum on there? Yep. Yep. Okay. So moved. A second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can, don't wait. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, next board meeting is on the 24th of March. A regular board event meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.